So if you're able, please rise and join us in our call to worship. This day is a gift from God. This time is a pause from the fever of life. So let us sing and listen and pray and feast and let us worship God. Please remain standing and join us in our opening hymn, which is, Lord, I want to be a Christian. Let's turn to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this morning. We give you thanks all the time when we're able to come together as a community of faith to lift up our praise and worship of you, to give thanks to you for all that you have given to us, and to honor that by sharing your love with so many others. Lord, as we gather in this time, we lift up the, the celebrations of, of healing that has taken place, of surgeries that have gone well, of, of families coming together in love and support, and our faith community being able to be there in the midst of people's difficulties, being the hands and feet of you in those situations. Lord, we also lift up to you uh, those that have experienced the loss of loved ones, those that are concerned for friends and family that are facing illness, we ask that you be uh, present in each of those situations, um, that you be with those that are facing procedures that are coming up or surgeries that are to happen, that you bless the doctors and the medical staff, that you guide their hands in everything that they do so that healing, your healing, can take place. We love you, Lord. And we're thankful that you hear the prayers that we don't lift up um, verbally, Lord, that you hear what is on our heart and that you're present in each and every one of those as well. Lord, we love you. And we're thankful for the ability to have our personal contact with you through prayer. And we remember that as we lift up the prayer that your son taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I invite the choir to come up. picture up here. What do you see? What's going on there? Do you know? Today is Ascension Sunday, and that's a picture of what our scripture tells us happened on that day, that Jesus actually flew up into the sky and ascended into heaven. So that's the disciples looking up, and you see Jesus' feet, like, down at the bottom, and the rest of him's up going into the clouds. Kind of like a superpower, huh? If you guys could have a superpower, you could have one superpower, what would it be? What do you want to do? I, if you want to fly, you got to go on an airplane. You got to go on an airplane. But if you could have a superpower and you didn't need an airplane, what would you want your superpower to be? Maybe there's flight, or maybe there's laser vision. Maybe you can see through walls. Maybe you can have super hearing. What do you think? Maybe you can swim underwater as much as you want and breathe underwater like Aquaman. What would your superpower be? Not sure? What would yours be? You can fly it. Not sure. You can fly an air balloon. You can fly an air balloon? There you go. Excellent. Anybody else have a superpower they'd want? Invisibility, okay, there we go. Excellent. Any other superpowers in the room? What is it? Teleportation. Teleportation. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I think I wanted all of them when I was a kid. I liked all the superheroes. You know, being able to go fast or be able to fly or be able to see things or become invisible. You know, those were all really cool things. And it would be really neat if we could have a superpower, wouldn't it? What if I told you that each of you, all of us, have a really amazing superpower? That every single one of us has a really incredible superpower. Would you believe me? Did you know you had a superpower? No? Didn't know? All right. I'm going to show you. It's really cool. Watch out. It's amazing. Go like this. Go like this. Oh, let's do that. 
Very cool. See this? This is our superpower. It's not really ours as much as it is ours in relationship with God. This is what we do when we pray. Maybe you fold your hands, maybe you put your hands like this. But every time we pray, we enter into the Spirit of God. And God is able to do amazing things in our lives and in other people's lives in response to our prayer. We don't make God do things. We're always trusting in God's will to be the best. But when we pray, lives change. Things change. The world becomes better every time we pray. That is an amazing superpower that we have. And we need to remember that we can do that. And that it really does make a difference in our lives and in other people's lives too. So remember, you've got a superpower. And it's the best power of all. It's your faith and your relationship with Jesus Christ. Cool? All right. Well, if you want to close us in prayer. <laughs> and the heads go down. <laughs> All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this morning, and we give you thanks for being a God who loves us and is with us always. We give you thanks for being a God who hears our prayers. Lord, thank you for the power and ability that we have to talk with you whenever we want to. And thank you for responding and being with us every time we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Let's take a moment out to give thanks for our, our offerings, tithes, and gifts. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gifts and the offerings that have come in. Uh, those that went in the box or those that came in by other means, we give you thanks for each and every one of those. We ask that you multiply those gifts so that they can help us in the ministry that you are calling us to. And we give you thanks for our children. And we give you thanks for the many people in the church that are your hands and feet in so many ways in the ministries of Springvale. Lord, we ask that you bless each and every one of those too and use them so that we become the church you would have us be. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you please rise, if you are able, and join us in the doxology. Our hymn of preparation for today is I'll Fly Away.
Our first reading is from Acts 1, 1 to 11. Jesus taken up into heaven. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift from my father, for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the dates that the Father has set by his authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. And my second reading is uh, the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 16 to 20. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And that's the word of our Lord. Pray with me, please. Precious Lord, your servant just reminded us of a superpower that is beyond all knowledge of ours. Prayer. And then we saw that expressed in a hug. A hug to a loved one. Lord, we extend that power We extend extend that privilege that you've given us. This morning we ask that your spirit may continue to abound and it may rest on the words of your servant, on your words that were read. And we ask that that spirit help those thoughts and those words enter our heart. Help us to grow and live like you would want. We pray and thank you for this superpower. Amen. Once again, beloved, today is Ascension Sunday, the day that we celebrate and remember Christ ascending into heaven. Um, And I'll talk more about this picture in a little bit, but it was just, uh, that was the image that came to mind for me when I was thinking about today. Um, And this is, like I said before, the last day of Easter time. Um, we run from Easter to Ascension Sunday, and then the following Sunday will be Pentecost. And so you'll see the colors change from white to red, and uh, we'll have a time of celebration as we remember the birthday of the church. From Easter till this moment, Christ appeared to his disciples and prepared them specifically for what would come next. Peter was restored and made into the rock again. He went from being the one who denied Christ uh, to Christ bringing him back into the fold, bringing him back into the fullness of who Jesus wanted him to be, Peter, the rock. Thomas had his doubts removed. They were taken away, and his spirit was built up, preparing him to be able to take the message of Jesus Christ into the world 
and to share the gospel in India. All the disciples were given the strength to even face death in the defense of their own faith. All but John were martyred for the faith, were given the opportunity to give it up, to turn away from it, to say no to it, and chose not to. And I think a lot of it had to do with the time that Jesus spent with them in this time of Eastertide. The other is Mary. When she went to the tomb and she encountered Jesus, what did he do? He told her to go and tell. In doing so, he made her an apostle, if we look at it by definition. An apostle, in its most literal sense, is an emissary from the Greek apostolos, literally meaning one who is sent off. So Mary was even made an apostle during this time, during this time leading up to today, Ascension Sunday. All this took place between Easter and today. Now, if you look at this picture, the disciples had to be one in amazement, right? Watching Jesus lift off and rise into the sky. But I wonder how many of them had a thought of, okay, now what? You know, they had Jesus with them. They watched Jesus die, crucified, buried, and then all of a sudden he comes back and he's with them and they're like, okay, this is back to normal a little bit. And then all of a sudden on this day, Jesus is like, I'm going home. See ya. And then takes off into the sky. You know, for how many of them was the question going through their head, now what? And you could see that a little bit even in their interaction with Jesus before he lifted off. In verse 6 of our Acts passage, it says, Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? So caught up on that. And he said, He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. In our Matthew passage, Jesus makes them all apostles, asking them to go into all the earth, just as he commands in the Acts passage as well. He then promises to be with them to the very end. I don't think any of them completely understood how that was going to work until Pentecost, which we'll discuss next week a little bit more. But you see, they were still focused on Jerusalem, weren't they? And what did Jesus do in both of our passages of Scripture today? He let them know that his focus wasn't just on Jerusalem and what was to become of Jerusalem. It was for the whole world. It was making them witnesses to share his message to the ends of the earth. So in the meantime, they are given the instruction to wait in Jerusalem until they receive the gift of baptism by the Holy Spirit. So after today, over the course of this week, they were waiting in Jerusalem, waiting to see what would come next. Luckily, we know that they were patient and waited and all things worked out. But imagine the conversations that they must have had over the course of that week. Maybe asking, what's going to become of Jerusalem? Continuing that same question, wondering, because They grew up believing that the Messiah was going to come and reestablish the kingdom of David in Jerusalem, and that's what it was all about. So for some of them, they were probably still caught up in wondering what was going to happen there. Some of them may have been asking, how will we know when the Holy Spirit shows up? Hadn't seen him, didn't know what that was all about. Probably wondering what that was going to look like. Also maybe wondering, what does it mean to be baptized without water? That's a new experience. That's something different. You know, we know about the dove alighting on Jesus when he came up out of the water, that the Holy Spirit was present there. But there were only a few of the disciples present at that, and they're still trying to figure out what the Holy Spirit really means. Jesus has talked about it, alluded to it, but it's still a mysterious thing for them, wondering what's going to happen. And some of them may have been asking, did you see Jesus fly up in the sky? 
Peter was probably saying, wonder why he didn't ask me to do that. All I got to do was walk on water. You know, it's very possible. I just imagine the conversations that they must have been having while they were waiting in Jerusalem for what was going to happen next. Essentially, Ascension Sunday for all the disciples what is what we like to have called in the military a hurry up and wait experience. Anyone familiar with that? Hurry up and wait. Not really moving forward, but you got to hurry up and be ready for it anyway. How many of us have experienced that in our own faith at different times? I've just been baptized. Now what? I've just been confirmed. Now what? I just prayed the sinner's prayer. Now what? I chose to come to church and give God a try. Now what? Or even, I just prayed for healing, Lord. Now what? And you could insert anything there. I just prayed for... Now what? I decided to follow you, Lord. Now what? If we're honest with ourselves, how many of us are still in the midst of a now what relationship with our God? The good news is that the Bible is full of stories of God's people who waited on the Lord only to find how God faithfully came through in each situation. Maybe not in their timing, but most definitely in God's timing, which is always perfect. He always comes through for his people. What does God ask us to do when we're in the now what time? He asks us to wait. He asks us to have faith. He asks us to trust that he is always with us, just as he said, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. And also, he asks us to know that his will is always best. Remember Jesus' prayer in the garden? Not my will, but yours be done. I'm telling you, that's a huge lesson for each of us as disciples. We need to wrestle with that. We need to grapple with that. We need to insert that in every prayer that we pray. We also need to give up and give over to God and let God do what God needs to do, to trust in his will. That is a hard thing. It would be so much nicer to have a vending machine God. God, I want a new car. Boom, get home in the driveway. Wouldn't that be awesome? That's kind of in our human nature what we want, but it's definitely not what we need. What we need is a God that knows more than we know, a God that knows better than we do, a God that's going to give us what we need when we need it, and we need to trust in that. When we pray, we need to already be celebrating that God is at work doing something in our midst that is going to be for our greater good. Not just asking, but knowing that God is at work. Those are important pieces And that needs to be something that we're about. I know that it's not easy, but it is always the right thing to do. To trust and obey God. To trust that God is doing something great. The other issue is we need to keep our eyes open and spirits alert to how God is showing up in our life. I think sometimes God is showing up and doing things and we totally miss it. His disciples still thought, even on the day of his ascension, that his whole purpose was to restore Jerusalem, when his real purpose was to restore all of creation back to God. That was his real purpose. How many times do we miss what God is doing in our midst? There's a great sermon illustration I've loved for years. I always think it's incredible. You heard the one about the old man in the storm? All right, there we go. You want to come tell it? Because I've told it a million. No, okay. (laughs) So anyway, the old man in the storm, the old man hears about a storm coming. And everyone's saying, you need to evacuate. You need to get out of there. And he prays to God and he hears God say, it's okay. I'm going to save you from the storm. So the storm's coming and National Guard shows up, pounds on the door says, hey, you got to go. The storm's coming. The waters are rising. You're going to die. Nope. 
I pray to God. God said he's going to save me. I'm all right. So next thing you know, the waters rise above the first floor. He's up on the second floor, leaning out the window. Boat comes by and says, come on, hop on the boat. We need to save you. The water's rising. You're going to die. He's like, nope, not going to die. I pray to God. God said he's going to save me. I'm good. So the boat goes away. Next thing you know, he's up on the roof. Water's still rising. Helicopter comes by, lowers the ladder, says, come on, come on up the ladder. We got to save you. Water's rising. You're going to die. He's like, nope, pray to God. God said he's going to save me from the storm. I'm good. Next thing you know, water rises. He gets swept away. He drowns and dies. Gets up to heaven. God comes over and says, what are you doing here? He's like, well, storm was coming. You said you were going to save me. I kept waiting. You didn't save me. He's like, I don't know what could have happened. I sent the National Guard. I sent a boat. I sent a helicopter. How many times is God doing something in the midst of our life and we don't recognize it for what it is? We don't recognize that that's what God is doing. We're waiting for something more spectacular than it needs to be. God doesn't need to show up with lightning bolts and flying in the sky and everything else for God to be present in our midst and answering our prayers. Sometimes it's in something simple, like the person that shows up at your door with a meal when you're going through a difficult time, or that card that you receive in the mail. Or being able to have someone sit down and just have conversation and prayer with us. Those are evidence of God being present with us in really powerful and amazing ways. That's why I was saying prayer is a superpower. On this Ascension Sunday, let's learn from the example of the disciples who trusted, waited, and were obedient to the Lord. Rather than become frustrated in their now what situation, they chose to trust in God's will to be done first. We need to do the same in our now what situations, recognizing that God knows the now what of every story and every experience that ever has been and ever will be. In the end, God wins. That is the greatest good news that we will ever hear. In the end, God wins wins. All will be well, no matter what. No matter what. Amen? Amen. All right. Amen. Please rise if you are able and join us in our hymn of sending, Christ the Lord is risen today.
Hey, Kels, can you leave that last screen up? Thank you. I love this song. Easter and Easter Tide is about ascension in so many ways. We have Jesus rising out of the grave on Easter morning. We have Jesus rising into heaven on this day. His purpose for coming back was to restore his disciples, to prepare them for what would be next, to help them through the now what's. The same is true for us. And I want us to think about this last verse of this amazing hymn. So are we now where Christ has led. Hallelujah. Following our exalted head. Hallelujah. Made like him, like him we rise. Hallelujah. Ours the cross, the grave, the skies. Hallelujah. It wasn't just something he was doing us for, for us to see and remember. It was, it was Jesus beckoning us on. It was an invitation to go in that direction, an invitation to continue the ministry, an invitation to be Christ's hands and feet. Pray on that today and this week. How are you following Jesus' lead? How is your now what taking you in a direction of being like Christ in the church, in its ministries, in your families, and in the world? That's what Ascension Sunday is really all about. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace. Amen.